There is a children's joke which asks, what did the tree say to spring? What a relief. <laughs> I am relieved, relieved to finally feel that spring is beginning a slow emergence despite the snow on the ground this morning. With the equinox just past, we are in the time of longer days, and those brighter evenings make it feel like the earth is waking up at last. And I at least, and perhaps some of you as well, have longed for life's expansion. After the long, long winter, after this long, long pandemic, I need the returning light in my spirit as much as in the sky. And I find that that light without ignites the light within. I need the blue skies and the warmer breezes. I need the red tulips and the yellow daffodils. Now the flowers are still in the stores. They're not yet emerging from the soil. But even store-bought tulips bring me hope for this reliefing, reviving, renewing that comes with this season. It is the new year indeed. And with all the struggles of people today, and there are many, and I know there'll be many in the days to come, from the war on Ukraine to the rise of those oppressive right-wing factions right here in Canada, in the midst of all this struggle, I need that beautiful revival of earth to nourish my spirit. The turning of the seasons is something that we don't create and we don't control, but it comes around every year without us having to do anything about it. And I find that renewing. Life will always regenerate, and all I have to do sometimes, as the poet says, is to stand still and be astonished. My work is loving the world. And it's the basis of all the other work we have to do, to help one another, to create, to make things better. But under all of that is our work to love the world in its suffering and in its beauty. You can tell we're back in person <laughs> for kind of time. If we pay attention, spring is astonishing. Take the time in the weeks to come to see and savor those sprouts of newborn grass, those tree buds, those snowdrops pushing forth relentlessly into life. Spring can renew our hearts if we stop and notice its gifts. The 15th century Japanese Zen Buddhist monk Ikuyu said, every day priests minutely examine the law and they endlessly chant complicated sutras. Before doing that, though, they should learn how to read the love letters sent by the wind and rain, the snow and moon. And I think right now, in these ever-challenging times, most of us could use a love letter or two. Love letters that reminds us that life includes joy, that gifts abound, that we are part of something magnificent. There are love letters everywhere sent by the wind and the snow and the rain. We open our hearts to read them. This nourishes the spirit, reminds us of life's beauty. I think we need this. I need this. And so I encourage you, all of you, to spend some time outside in the coming days, whether they are snowy or sunny and read the mail sent to earth to all beings. Snowdrops and maple sap, that first blush of green grass, the calls of the chickadee, love letters. And today we're gonna to root ourselves into our bodies, into this earth with maple syrup and earth blessings. And in the days to weeks to come as spring, brings its inevitable self to this land, my hope is that all of us may be revived by that astonishing beauty of this good green earth. Our work 
is loving the world. Let spring renew your heart. It is a blessing to be here, to be alive in this place, in this time. So say we all.